Hello friends, welcome back. This will be the last video in my series about built-in accessibility features on a Chromebook. In case you missed them, I went over reading, writing, and visual supports. You can find them in my playlist, so be sure to go check those out. In this video, I'll be taking a look at the features that support motor needs. So if you struggle with using the keyboard or the trackpad on the Chromebook, these tools may help you. Let's get started. Let's start with the mouse settings. To adjust these, you're going to go to your accessibility settings. And you're going to scroll down until you find mouse and touchpad. Under this section, you'll find open mouse and touchpad device settings. So we're going to click on that. And here are the different settings for our mouse. So first we have swap primary mouse button. So as it's set right now, the left mouse button is the main button. And then if we want to interact differently with anything, we have the right click. So if I right click on the screen, I'll get a bunch of different um, menu options. If I enable this, now my left mouse button will get me these options and my right mouse button will be my main source of interaction. The next setting is mouse acceleration. So what this does is as I move my mouse, the faster I move my mouse, the more my cursor will accelerate across the screen. So now with this disabled, no matter how fast I move my mouse, the cursor will pretty much move the same uh, speed across my screen. I like to have this enabled just because I like to be able to move my cursor very quickly across the screen. You can also adjust the general mouse speed. So if I want it to move very quickly with very little movement of my mouse, I can make it go very fast. I know it's kind of hard to, to tell because you can't see how quickly my mouse is moving. I'm barely moving my mouse right now. So the cursor is moving quite quickly compared to the movement of my mouse. And now if I make it slow, now if I move my mouse very quickly, it's actually not moving the cursor um, very quickly at all. And then we have reverse scrolling. This is a little tricky to explain, um, so I'll do my try to do my best. Um, with it set in its current setting, so right now it's off, what this means is that if I move my mouse wheel up, my screen will move up. And if I move my mouse wheel down, my screen will move down. So here I'm moving my wheel down and the page is going down and then I move it up and the page goes up. Um, if I turn this on, now it's the opposite. So if I move my wheel up, my page is actually going to go down. And if I move my wheel down, the page will go up. I like to think of this as if I were actually physically interacting with the screen. So if my screen were a piece of paper in front of me and I pushed it up, the contents of the screen would actually move down in my visual field. And if I did the opposite, if I physically moved the screen with my hand and pushed down on it, the contents of the screen in my visual field would move up. So kind of think of it reverse scrolling as if you were physically interacting with the screen and that would indicate how it would move based on your scrolling movements. And then we move on to the touchpad settings. So the first setting is enable um, tap to click. So what this does is um, with this enabled, I can simply tap on the trackpad and it will select that option. I don't have to completely depress the 
entire trackpad or do a physical click of the trackpad in order to enable something. Tap dragging is kind of the same idea, except it also applies to dragging your finger across your trackpad to select something. So I'm gonna enable that right now. This is kind of hard to tell what I'm doing if, since you can't see my trackpad. So I'll describe what I'm doing on the trackpad so you can then see what it does on the screen. But I'm going to double tap and I'm not going to actually click the trackpad. I'm just going to tap it with my finger and then I'm going to drag my finger across my trackpad and you'll see that it selects the text as I drag my finger across. So again, I'm not um, clicking or I'm not physically pushing down on the trackpad, I'm simply tapping it and then dragging my finger across. So that's the tap dragging option. Um, I actually prefer to keep it off. That's my personal preference just because um, I often find myself dragging my fingers across the trackpad and accidentally selecting things that I don't mean to select. So um, if you're kind of sensitive to that, like I am, you might want to keep this off. Um, but if not, it's kind of nice because you don't have to actually like press down on the trackpad. Next is the touchpad acceleration. So um, just like the mouse acceleration with this enabled, the faster you move your finger across the touchpad, the faster your cursor will accelerate across the screen. And if you turn this off, it's more of a one-to-one -one interaction. Um, so my, my cursor will move across the trackpad um, as fast as my finger goes across it as well. With this enabled, the slower I move my finger across the trackpad, the slower the acceleration will be. Touchpad speed is the same as the mouse speed, so I can make it very move very quickly across my screen with very little movement or I can slow it down so that I kind of have to really drag my cursor across the screen. Um, again, I personally like it quite sensitive so that I don't have to um, really try to move the cursor across the screen. Um, but again, it's completely up to you where you want that setting. And then reverse scrolling with the touchpad is actually the opposite of the mouse. So when you have this turned off, if you push your fingers up on the trackpad, the page will actually scroll down. So it's it's again like you're physically moving the page. So if you're pushing, if you were to physically push this page upward it would drag the page down and then the opposite. If you were to push it down, it would drag the page um, back up. But if we turn on reverse scrolling, it will make it the opposite. So if I push down on my trackpad or move my fingers across it in a downward motion, it will move the page down. And if I move upwards with my fingers, it will move the page up. I personally like to keep this off, like I said before, because I like the idea of physically moving the, um, the screen. It just makes sense to me. So it makes sense that if I were to push the page up, it would actually scroll up on the page. So again, it's completely up to you though and how you like to interact with the touchpad um, and with the screen. If you have trouble pressing down on the touchpad to click things, then automatic clicking might be the perfect setting for you. You'll find this under accessibility settings and it's under the mouse and touchpad section. So here we find automatically click when the cursor stops. I'm going to turn this on. And now wherever my cursor stops on the page, if I leave it there for a certain amount of time, it will automatically click wherever my cursor is. Right now I have the delay set for four seconds. So if I hold my cursor here, it automatically selects this option and I can adjust the delay from here. I'm going to jump down to the movement threshold option. So right now it's set to extra small. 
But if you notice, it's kind of hard to see right now because it's so small, but there's a little circle that will show up next to my cursor whenever I stop moving. So I'm gonna make it extra large so it's easier to see. And now if I stop my cursor, you'll see that circle. And it gives me a little timer indicator to let me know when it will click. I can stabilize the click location. So if you have trouble holding your cursor still long enough in one single spot in order for it to accurately click, um, this is going to be the setting you want to turn on. So now as my circle shows up, I can move my cursor around and as long as it stays within that circle, I'll still click on whatever my cursor had pointed to. Let me show you in a web page. So here is a spot on the web page that I can click. So I'm going to hold my cursor for a few seconds. And as you can see, I can still move my cursor around and it will still select that spot on the page. You can also tell it to revert to a left click after any action. So down here I have a menu of actions that I can choose from to tell my Chromebook what I want it to do when it does click. So I have a left click, right click, double click, click and drag, scroll, and no action or pause the action for now. So now with the pause enabled, I can move my cursor around the screen and I don't have to worry about it clicking somewhere. Let's say I want to right click, And now if you notice in the bottom corner, it automatically jumped back to that left click. So I can select an option and not have to worry about telling it to go back to left click. You of course can turn that off if you want, but it is a pretty handy option. Here's what it would look like if I selected the scroll option. So it brings up a scrolling menu and I can tell it where I want it to go on the page. and I can close out of it. I can also move my menu position to different corners of the screen. There are also some keyboard settings that could be really helpful. So I'm gonna go up to the keyboard and text input section. First, we have sticky keys. I went over this in my last video, but just to give a quick overview, when you turn sticky keys on, whenever you press a key on the keyboard, it will automatically select that key. And if you press it again, it's like you're holding that key down. So I'm gonna press control, and you'll notice in my left-hand corner, my sticky keys indicator popped up. If I press control again, now you'll see it's underlined, which means that it's acting like control is being held down. So this is really helpful if you need to use keyboard shortcuts and you aren't able to hold down the keys or multiple keys at once. And then to unselect it, you're just gonna click it one more time and your sticky keys will go away. If you are using keyboard shortcuts, another really handy tool is the keyboard shortcut menu. So that's also located under keyboard and text input, and you're going to open the keyboard device settings. And scroll down and near the bottom is view the keyboard shortcuts. When you click on this, it'll bring up your keyboard shortcuts menu. And from here, you can search for specific shortcuts that you may be looking for. You can also bring up the keyboard shortcut menu by pressing Control, Alt, and the question mark. 
And finally, I just wanted to quickly touch on adaptive switches. Now, I'm not going to go too far into this in this video, but just really briefly, if you are using an adaptive switch to interact on the Chromebook, there are a couple of things to note. First is whether you are using a Bluetooth or a USB switch. So Bluetooth, it's pretty simple. You pair it just like any other Bluetooth device program it and you're good to go. Um, an example of a Bluetooth switch would be the Bluetooth by Ablenet. You can also use USB adaptive switches. However, just note that you need to be sure that you're using one that does not require software because a Chromebook does not run software programs. So if your switch requires you to download software, it's not going to work on the Chromebook. For example, the DJ Switch Interface Pro and the Ablenet Hitch 2 are two examples of USB switches that do not require software. If you'd like to learn more about adaptive switches, let me know in the comments below. So those are all of the tools that could support motor related needs. Don't forget to check out my other videos where I went over reading, writing, and visual accessibility settings on a Chromebook. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. And until next time, keep learning something new every day.